Hi everybody, it's Christina Mascari from Pretty Distressed and I have a very controversial question for you. Do you think farmhouse style and decor is dead? I don't think it is, but personally, I am kind of sick of it around my home. And if you're feeling that way too, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take those farmhouse items and update them to help them fit into your style today. So if you wanna see these mini makeovers, just keep watching. So I wanna start with a disclaimer before anybody comes for me. If your home is farmhouse style and you love it, please keep it. These are just my opinions. At one point, I really, really loved farmhouse. I mean, my name is pretty distressed. I used to distress every single piece of furniture that I refinished, but I'm just kind of changing and growing. I want a simpler, cleaner home. I'm really gravitating towards earthy tones and textures. And so I'm gonna bring a little bit of that to these farmhouse decor items I have in my house. So these are all the farmhouse items I've grabbed around my home. I'm going to elevate these and give them a new modern look. But first I want to tell you about today's sponsor. ButcherBox is super convenient. It's great tasting, high quality meat that you can feel good about delivered right to your front doorstep. You choose your box and delivery frequency. They offer five boxes, four curated box options, as well as the popular custom box. So you get exactly what you want and what your family loves and you can cancel at any time with no penalty. ButcherBox sources from farmers and fishermen who meet the highest standards of quality and it's delivered right to your door in this eco-friendly box. It's 100% recyclable and everything is frozen at peak freshness. Opening this box is so much easier than hunting around the grocery store for that high quality meat. Packed inside, I had 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, and pork raised crate-free. If you have not tried ButcherBox yet, you are in for a treat because right now new members are going to receive two pounds of that 100% grass-fed ground beef in every box for the lifetime of your membership. What a deal. We have already been enjoying the delicious 100% grass-fed beef with this roast and I did some of the organic chicken tenders in the air fryer and the kids loved these, which is always a win. I know you are going to love ButcherBox, so check out my link in the description box to order today. I'm going to be doing seven total makeovers today and the first one is this glass bottle. You see these a lot. It's like, you know, a milk bottle. So any type of glassware, clear glassware like this is going to look really farmhouse. So I'm going to start by removing the top. I'm grabbing a black furniture paint that I have. You can grab any craft paint that you have, acrylic, anything you can get at the hobby store you could use here. I'm just using things that I have around my shop to make this a little bit more affordable for myself. So I'm adding this black paint and then I'm gonna take a paint additive. This is just a paint thickener. If you don't have something like this, you could use baking soda and it'll give you the same kind of texture. Again, I have this one and it works great on furniture makeovers, but just a basic baking soda will be enough to update decor like this. So this will make your paint like a brownie like consistency. And when it dries, it'll give the look of, you know, concrete and have this really beautiful texture to it. So as I'm doing my paintbrush, I'm going to do a stippling motion to get those peaks and valleys kind of going to make it look like it's a ceramic vase once this dries. This paint has a really matte finish when it dries, so it's going to give that illusion of stone or concrete and really make it look like it's a piece of pottery. If you wanted to seal this to protect the finish, you definitely could. I'm not gonna top coat this or seal it with any kind of clear coat because I want the beautiful matte look when it dries. And I find with decor, you don't really have to seal it. It's not being touched every day. So you can just kind of paint it and be on your way. And once it dried, here is what the vase looked like. Next up is this thankful, grateful, blessed canvas. While I am all these things, I just don't really care for words around my house. I think this trend is definitely on its way out, especially this typewriter font. This font was really raised, so I'm just grabbing a piece of sandpaper. This is a medium grit sandpaper, and I'm just buffing this out a little bit and then cleaning it off so that that raised font doesn't stick out on what I'm doing. And I've grabbed some just spackling paste. This is the stuff that you use to fill nail holes in your wall. And I'm just gonna smear this on here in every direction. My goal is just to get a really textured, white, simple canvas that I can use, um, you know, on a shelf and hang it up. So. 
I just kind of smeared this all over the place and didn't really have a vision for it, but it actually ends up turning out pretty cool. So just watch. Once this was completely covered, I just made sure I had enough variation and strokes going different ways, and then I covered the sides as well. This took about two days to dry because of how much spackle I put on it, but once it was dry, it looks so cool on the back of the shelf, just adding a little bit of texture to this vignette. Next up are these galvanized spheres. I really like the shape of these. I just don't like the finish on them. So what I'm gonna do is gild these with a gold brassy gilding wax. This is one of my favorite colors. I use it on hardware and shelf brackets and stuff around my house. It's just like the perfect gold. So I'm applying this with a little brush and that wasn't going so well. It wasn't getting enough of the color payoff on there. So next I grabbed a rag and that was definitely working a lot better. Um, but it was hard to get in the under part of the spheres. So I thought a better idea would be to spray paint everything and then go back and gild over that. Cause I do like the spray paint, but there's just something about the color gold <laughs> of that gilding wax that is just my absolute favorite. So once these were dry, I just took that gilding wax and went over top of these. Um, you can use any type of gilding wax here, rub and buff, anything that you find at the craft store, but this one is definitely my absolute favorite. These have to dry for about 12 hours before you can use them, but I love them. I'm definitely going to be using these in furniture makeover staging soon. Okay, next up is my little pineapple plant, which I love, but I want to give this more of an earthy look. Again, get rid of this galvanized metal. So I have grabbed a terracotta color paint that I have, and I'm going to add that paint thickener again, and we're going to give this pot the look of a terracotta pot versus a metal pot. I'm not going to make over the holder. I'm just going to pitch that and just go with the can. So this is the same process I did on that vase. So again here, just any colored paint that looks like the color terracotta, like a terracotta pot. Just like with the vase on the first makeover, you can use any craft paint that you have that looks like the color of a terracotta pot and add that paint thickener or add some baking soda and just stipple this on. And on this one, you want to do the inside too, in case that pokes through on your plant. And you don't want to seal this one either because you want it to have that chalk-like finish. So this looks so cute. Quick update, still using the greenery that I have and saving a little bit of money there. Okay, this lantern, I have two of these. I love these when I first bought them, but they are just way too distressed for me. And I am kind of getting rid of this coastal color, even though it used to be one of my favorites. I'm just changing it up because I've had it for so long. Lucky for me, I uh, the glass comes out of these lanterns. I started painting it and I was getting that everywhere and I hate taping, so I did not want to tape. So lucky for me, these did come out. I'm going to use the same paint that I used on the first project. So it's just a black mineral furniture paint that I have. And this zebra brush, the triangle brush was perfect for this project. Helped me get in all the little edges and crevices. If you wanted to do this a little bit faster, you could do a spray paint or something like that. But again, I have just furniture paint on top of furniture paint. So that is mostly what you're going to see me using here. Once everything was dry, I cleaned the glass and then added it back in. I think these were definitely my favorite makeover. They look so stunning and I can't believe I waited this long to paint them. Next up is this metal tub. I'm gonna start by removing these handles. So I'm just gonna cut these off and then I'm gonna give it a look of stone, like a neutral stone with a spray paint. So instead of doing that technique, I've already showed you twice where we use that paint thickener. You definitely could use that here, but this time I'm going to use a spray paint that kind of has some texture and a sandstone look to it. 
it. I've had this for a while on a project I was going to use another time and never did it. So I wanted to use this. Uh, spray painting is super easy. It just is really stinky. You want to be able to do this outside. I'm in my garage and have the other garage door open. So I have a lot of ventilation and I'm wearing a mask. Spray paint is obviously a really quick and affordable way to update any type of decor. And if you don't have a lot of furniture paint like me, it might be a cheaper option for you to go out and buy some cans like this. And I did spray paint the inside of this, but I didn't cover it completely because I always have pillows and blankets in here and you're never going to see that. So save yourself some paint if you're going to do the same thing with this. But I love the texture on this. I love the color. So I would definitely recommend this product to update decor. Okay, my final makeover of the video is going to be this vase. And I want to show you that you don't always have to completely redo an item to give it a new look. I'm just going to change out the greenery on this. I've grabbed this dried pompous from Hobby Lobby. I got it for about $10 going to remove this boxwood ball and then I'm just going to kind of put these in the vase so I don't have to do anything to the vase and it's going to give it a whole new look and I didn't have to completely replace the whole thing. Super simple makeover. I love it. And here are some of those other items styled on the shelf. I had a lot of fun doing this and I have learned you don't always have to go to the store and get the latest and greatest that is out in the spring collection. You can repurpose stuff that you have around your house or maybe things that you find at the thrift store. So I hope this inspires you to do the same. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little different than what you're used to seeing from me. If you like this type of video, please let me know down in the comment section below. I will be back next week with another video. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time.